No. I needed more wine, yes, but beyond that, I needed to have my wheels rolling, to travel somewhere unfamiliar. Your past is simply a list of all your todays, and today, I was beginning a journey. In an attempt to satiate my insatiable wanderlust, I decided to take my newly acquired Harvest Host membership and do a little hop skip from one New Jersey winery to the next. A week of inebriated reflection and an opportunity to put all my van modifications to the test. The Harvest Host membership provides for one free overnight in a vineyard, a farm, a museum. No water, no electric, no sewer, nothing. Just you, your RV, and a beautiful setting. And in my case this week, all the wine sampling your palate can stand. And in return, it is understood that you will buy a bottle of wine. Or three. Now, you're not supposed to get too comfortable. It's not a campground. You were on someone's private property and you should respect that. Don't be putting out rugs and grills and such. Keep it simple and discreet. All right, all right, everybody calm down. Now where I was directed to park for the night at each of these vineyards was always a surprise. You just never knew. One night I was tucked away in a cozy corner. Then another night I was sitting stark in a wide open field. And then there was that night I was basically right on the side of a service road with nobody around for miles. It seemed to be really dark that night. I knew I would be exploring these vineyards with my camera. So my first morning I was up and out early. The two best times of the day to get that nice, low, romantic lighting are sunrise and what is referred to as the golden hour around sunset. I love this time of the day. It's peaceful, unadulterated, pure. Well, it was right about that time old Ed came out to start his day. Great-grandfather bought this farm, oh gosh, early 1900s. But yeah, we've been here for four generations. I grew up in the house across the street, and then we made the big move when my wife and I got married and moved across the street. We support our neighbors. We support our neighboring businesses, our neighboring wineries. Um, you know, somebody comes in, we don't offer food here at this time. So we recommend to stop at our local restaurants that we, we frequent. And actually there's been a lot of times where after we've closed up shop, we've taken our new friends and we go out to eat together. Mm. So it's it's different, it's, it's fun. I enjoy it, it's my best job ever. You're always working, um, you're always promoting this area. Um, and it's, it's, it's great. Everybody that walks through the door becomes our friend. Uh, I have right now, there's seven and a half acres of grapes and uh, about 140 acres of soybeans that we do. We do 2,000 gallons, so you multiply that times four, so we're about 8,000 8, bottles of wine per year. It's, it, it's been amazing to watch how wines have 
become an important part of New Jersey agriculture. Marsha and Ed both said I could stay as long as I liked, but I had gotten word from a local that there was another campground 20 miles down the road that backed up to another vineyard. That would give me a chance to dump my tanks, plug in, and top off my fresh water supply. Now that there is one of the trade-offs for having such a small footprint. The tank capacities are not great. A weekender? Sure, no problem. Any longer, or travel as a couple, then empty out and replenish becomes your mantra. Empty out and replenish. Empty out and replenish. I hightailed it down the road. My waste tanks needed to be emptied, and my fresh water was low. That means pulling into a campground. You see, New Jersey is not as RV friendly as other states. While I could most likely find water, maybe ask at a gas station, RV dump stations are not readily available. And New Jersey campgrounds typically charge 20 bucks just to dump. A bit too rustic for me. But not as bad a choice as you will see me make later on in the week. You can be sure of that. And yes, the Monroeville Winery was right behind the campground. Accessible by a walking path through the woods. Pretty cool. I felt like Little Red Riding Hood. Or that time when Scarecrow, Tin Man, and Dorothy met up with the lion. As I walked across an unmarked field, I began to see the vineyards and a guy rolling these giant barrels around behind a barn. Turned out to be the owner of the winery. We, both being self-employed in New Jersey all our working lives, commiserated with one another and traded war stories that had us both howling with laughter. So spontaneous and enjoyable was this meetup, I never thought to turn on my camera. All right, so this is gonna be my cooking class. I'm in a campground, I got power, when I got the stove on, I got to have the fan on, so of course you're going to hear some background noise. So here's how I start. I cut up a lemon, and I put some water in my breakfast pan. This is where I fried my eggs this morning. I leave that in there because that's good. I put a little lemon in there and get that going. Oh, I'm making a mess already. Easy, buddy, easy. Little water. Bring that to a, a gentle simmer. And in the meantime, you get your asparaguses. And you don't cut asparagus. You let them break naturally. They find their little spot where they break. These are not as crisp because they've been in the fridge, but you can see it happening. They break where they want to break. The bottom you throw away. The other part's the part you eat. You ever have asparagus where you chew it and chew it and chew it? It feels like it's got threads in it. That's because you tried to eat too much of the stalk. Believe me, I got something to teach you here. See? Uh-oh. Five second rule. Boy, there's not much left. I had a little asparagus in my dinner last night. So we're hurting here. Hurting on asparagus. I'm gonna let that parboil. Parboil is a term. Yeah. It's Eclipse Monday, and I'm in overly cloudy Hamilton, New Jersey at DiMatteo Vineyard and Winery. Frank DiMatteo does an extraordinary job with his wines. Well, I've been making wine all my life. 
with my uh, grandmother. We used to have two acres down in the middle of Hamilton. She, she didn't put white with white, pink with pink, and red with red. It was just wine to her. Whatever the Lord put on the plant is which sugar the, the grape had. We had a little winery. I built a little winery, 28 by 28. I figured, oh, this is plenty big enough. In about two years, I ran out of space at the little winery. So I went downtown, and I'm sitting on a planning board in Hamilton at the time. I go downtown. They said, no, you can't expand on that property no more. Pine Lands won't allow you to expand. But I had already owned this piece of property that we're on right now at present. And I said, okay. Well, I had already planted some grape in the back. I planted some concrete ivies back here. So I went and got the, the license transferred, which took me another six or seven months to get it transferred to here. And I built this building. And uh, since then, I've already expanded the building three times. And I'm on my last expansion now. Uh, we make several different kind of wines. We make sweet wine, fruit wine. We make white wines and red wines. Our favorite wine, our most popular wine is Pasquale Red, which is a combination of Concord and Ives. Uh, we named it after a friend of mine who passed away. And uh, he was a sweet little Italian guy and the wine's sweet like he is. And that's how we, we got started into where we're at now. So kind and gentle a man, Frank invited me, who he just met, to sit with him and his right-hand man, Sheila, to drink his wine and to wait for the eclipse. I would imagine that this is the wine they serve in heaven. I have to say that all the dry reds I have tried this week are excellent, and these New Jersey winemakers, they should be taken seriously. Well, for us, the eclipse never came. But our time together was precious nonetheless. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. My grandmother would kill me if she saw me using this crap, but it's what I gotta do. A little codfish with some spinach and some tomato sauce. What else do we have in here that I gotta get rid of? I gotta have a beer while I'm doing this. I've been to so many wineries and I got all this wine on board, but I don't wanna drink any of it until I got my wife with me and we'll drink it together. Oh, that's good. So we're having codfish and uh, We'll throw some black olives in there. Uh, get rid of the water and the olives. Salty. Can't have this too often, you know. Lemon, olives, spinach. You know what else I'm gonna throw in there? Some feta cheese. <laughs> feta cheese. All right, yeah, I should have had them boiling already. I think that's how one of these uh, foo-foo chefs would have done it, but this thing I am is foo-foo. This is gonna be good. It's a nice piece of cod. A little over half a pound, for whatever that means. I could eat two pounds if it was in front of me. I'm going to, ah, there we go. We're burling. Gently squeeze your tomatoes. That's ready. And we got some spinach we'll throw in there with the olives, feta, put some lemon on top. Believe me, I've done this before. It's delicious. It's delicious. I'm at a Harvest Host winery and they got me off along the side here by a highway. You could hear the traffic. But in the meantime, they did provide an electrical outlet for us. It's buried in these bushes and it's mounted upside down. So I don't know if you can see it or not when you get in here, but the plug's mounted upside down. So my dog bone, it's a 15 amp circuit, has to be upside down and then hang into my 
um, surge protector. So I use my West Marine Velcro straps. I got one here holding this dog bone against the pole, and there's another one in the back that's carrying the weight of my surge protector to keep the dog bone right where it belongs. There's no stress on any of these connections. That's why these things are so good to have. We used to have a 40-foot Class A diesel with three slides. One thing I truly appreciate lately is the small footprint of my little van. The first question out of the host's mouth when I call to inquire about a stay is, how big is your rig? I basically have the option to go wherever an SUV could go. Haven't had a problem yet, but I do continue to wrestle with the pros and cons of a 23-foot van. We'll get onto that later. I'm sitting here in the vineyard at the Jesse Creek Winery in Cape May Courthouse, New Jersey. I came in here the other night as a Harvest host member. This is where I was tucked in nice and cozy. It was the hottest two days of the week. I had my generator running for hours just to keep the van cool. The tasting room here is cavernous. Nice and cool with so much warmth at the same time. And there is no shortage of gathering spots set up all around this vineyard. So I got to talking with the manager and she told me they have a local artist who's painting these very special renditions for a new label that they're going to produce for a, uh, a reserve issue of wine that's going to commemorate and donate to the local wildlife conservationist society. This is a big stopping point, Cape May, for uh, monarch butterflies. There's a big horseshoe crab population here. A lot of birds stop here on their migratory paths. So Jesse Creek is doing their part to support that. I said, I've been a photographer all my working life. I can shoot those paintings for you and enhance them and get you a nice file so you can print your labels. Well, they like that idea. So I had to leave this vineyard to go stay in a campground for a night because I had run out of propane, my black and gray tanks were full, and my fresh water was gone. And you can't shower with wine, although I have tried. So I came back, we got the paintings here at the vineyard, and I took some shots. I'll bring them back up to the studio and I'll enhance them and send them on down. They gave me these nice two bottles of wine for my trouble. So this is just another way to show you how great RV life is. Anything can happen, and the connections you make with people, it's not the same as in an office environment. All right. So you got that stuff boiling. That softens it up a little. I cut myself. Now you gotta get the water out. Wait do you see me try to do this. This is going to be nothing but a big mess. I always run cold water when I send boiling water down the drain. Always. Kabish. All right. So now you push your parboiled uh, asparaguses to the side. It wouldn't hurt to have a little more water. Doesn't hurt. Nothing hurts. It's all food. It's good. Now we put that in the bottom. And that's going to be like a nice bed. That's a nice little bath for the fish. You lay the fish on top like that. You put an, another layer of this crap on. Okay. You throw some olives in here. Oh my, look at that. It's looking pretty. There you go. I'm going to put the rest of these in. Oop. This happens all the time. I hit my head on this corner all the time. We're gonna put these olives in a Tupperware. Now that is a real tip, huh? We got the, I'm gonna hold off on the uh, feta till the very end. I don't wanna overcook the feta. It's very delicate. What the hell is that in there? It looks like a spider. 
All right, you put that on. Where's the lid? Now you bring this to a, a little, a little flame. You don't want to go crazy with it, but you do have to cook the fish. You know, you don't want to eat raw fish. This isn't a sushi class. Now you should remember me speaking about my displeasure with a particular campground. Some are good and some are not so good. They all serve a purpose and I don't intend to project any negativity here. Just a visual comparison for your viewing pleasure. I mentioned having to leave Jesse Creek for one night. I was excited to go to one of my favorite campgrounds, Holly Shores in Cape May. Nice pads and inner roadways, clean, well run, and you pay for that. One other night, I decided to save a few fazools instead of Holly Shores. And I sold off my happiness for 20 bucks. It wasn't worth it. Here are my umbilicals in a nice clean site. Water, electric, and sewer. Emptying your tanks is as simple and neat as turning on the water and pulling a valve. Okay, while that's simmering over there, I want you to take, chop up about two inches of Velcro. Wait a minute, that's the wrong video. Forget that, forget I said that. Damn, Velcro. I use Velcro for everything. All right, that's got to simmer. Good job with the drawers, Pleasure Way. Everything fits real nice. These owls will go in my eggs tomorrow morning. And, oh, I forgot one thing. This is, this is what makes it look like a pro did it. You slice up some lemons and you throw them on top. How could I forget that? This one, I'm gonna go like that. How do you like that, huh? Pretty good. This is probably hot. Oh, look at. You gotta see what this looks like. Oh, wait a minute. Let me get a paper towel. Hold on a second. Okay. Put those back up there, out of the way. Now look at this. I'm gonna bring you over here, easy. Don't get hurt. Look at that. Doesn't that look good? Simmering away. There's fish under there. Don't use Velcro. I was just kidding. How do you like that? That's, that was some delicate camera work right there. In the spirit of full disclosure, for those of you unfamiliar with some of the less attractive aspects of RV life, I give you the emptying of the black tank at a dump station. Some dump stations are nicer than others. This one is not so nice. Make sure you've got both ends of that sewer hose firmly connected where they belong. I never knew that playing with a slinky when I was a kid was going to give me the skill set to do this job. And carefully disconnect the hose from the RV and rinse it thoroughly with fresh water. Right 
That undulating motion that I'm doing is actually filling the sewer hose with water and then quickly releasing it and letting it flow fast down the drain. It does a better job of cleaning the inside of that hose than just running water through it. Agitate, agitate, agitate. That slinky motion is filling the hose with water and then quickly releasing it down the tube. It does a better job of cleaning than just sticking a hose in there. Give the outside ends a nice rinse and then tuck it back in its sleeve where it belongs in the RV. If you like, you can then hose down the area, close up the sewer cap and be on your way. I keep a box of sanitary rubber gloves in the van. Disposables. You use them to do this job. It's the smart thing to do. Now, I have not looked in here. It's been cooking about 15 minutes. So we're gonna take a look together. Oh my God, look at this. You'd pay 25 bucks for this in a restaurant. Look how that's simmering. You didn't know, you didn't know I knew how to simmer, did you? Now the last thing you want to do when you got about five minutes left is you get your feta cheese, feta, feta. And you come over here with your lid handle, you get that out of the way, and you put a little feta cheese on. See, you didn't want to put this on in the beginning, it would have just been bleh. But you give it a little, a couple of minutes of that, not even a couple. You're just going to take the edge off and then we get ready to eat. My time in the wineries is coming to an end. In the next few days, I will make my way north to the beach town of Lavalette to spend a couple days down the shore with family. So here's what I got. Look at how good this looks. Huh? There's cod under there. In a nice sauce. It's very delicate and unassuming. And while I'm having my meal, what am I watching? I'm watching We Are The Russos. They've got a new video out today. They are camping with their van in a campground, just like me. Here's a view out my window. I'm right next to the pool over there. I gotta come in to a campground every once in a while to fill up on propane and water, dump my tanks, that's what I'm doing tonight. Then I'll go back to boondocking in the wineries. So I'm going to enjoy my meal and then we'll get back to the wineries tomorrow. So here's what the outside of the van looks like at night. There's my rope light, part of it anyway. I have several sections that I put together. a lantern out here for cooking. Look how nice that lamp looks inside. Cozy. Tungsten light. Very cozy. Got a lot of action going on in the campground tonight. You can feel the energy, the excitement. Campfires are going. There's still people in the pool. That's surprising. Yeah, look at that. All right, pretty cool. This is 12,800 ISO on the camera, so props to Sony for that. Pretty good.
The day has come. I'm headed to the shore. You all know the lifeblood on YouTube is to like, comment, share, and subscribe. I am so very grateful to all of you for your support. Thank you.